All praises to the Most High. So tonight's topic is called Growth in the Spirit. Growth in the Spirit. That's tonight's topic. Let's open up with the book of Isaiah. Isaiah 28 verse 9. Isaiah 28 verse 9. Let's read that. We're going to start there. Isaiah. Okay, come on. Verse 9. Go ahead. Whom shall he teach knowledge? And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that come are on. weaned from the milk and drawn from the breasts. Read that again, verse 9. Isaiah chapter 28, verse 9. Come on. Whom shall he teach knowledge? And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Mm -hmm. Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breasts. So now the book Isaiah is speaking to the 12 tribes of Israel. Okay. He's saying, Whom shall he teach knowledge? So there's there's four keywords in here that we're gonna focus on: knowledge, doctrine, milk, and breasts. Knowledge, doctrine, milk, and breasts. Okay, read that part again, verse 9. Come on. Isaiah chapter 28, verse 9. Read. Whom shall he teach knowledge? Whom shall God teach his knowledge? So we need to find out what is God's knowledge. Okay, whom shall he teach his knowledge? Jump up to verse 1. We need to understand who's the subject. Okay, Isaiah 28 verse 1. Read what you got. Isaiah chapter 28 verse 1. Come on. Woe to the crown of pride, to the drunkards of Ephraim, whose glorious beauty mm -hmm. is a fading flower, which are on the head of the fat valleys of them that are overcome with wine. You see that thing? Of them that are overcome with wine. Because he's talking to Ephraim. But in these last days, he's talking to all 12 tribes of Israel. Understand that thing. So now the subject is about the Israelites. Okay? Watch this. Now read verse 9 again. Isaiah chapter 28 verse 9. Mm -hmm. Whom shall he teach knowledge? Stop right there. Whom shall he teach his knowledge? Whom shall he teach his knowledge? Meaning he's talking about who? Israel. The 12 tribes of Israel. He was talking about Ephraim then, but he's talking now, in these last days, he's addressing the 12 tribes of Israel. He says, whom shall he teach knowledge? Meaning not everybody in the 12 tribes of Israel, they are going to be taught. Meaning they are going to be allowed to be instructed out of God's law. So that's hence the question. Whom shall he teach knowledge? Okay, get that in Malachi 2 verse 7. What is the knowledge? Whom out of the 12 tribes of Israel shall he teach knowledge? Okay, shall he teach his knowledge? Okay, Malachi 2 verse 7. Let's read that. Come on. Malachi chapter 2 verse 7. Go ahead. For the priest's lips should keep knowledge. The priest's lips should keep knowledge. Go ahead. And they should seek the law at his mouth. Mm -hmm. For he is the messenger of the Lord of hosts. Because he says, at the priest, at the mouth of a priest, you must find knowledge. So when a priest opens his mouth, he must what? He must open his mouth in knowledge, which is God's laws. Because he's the messenger of the Lord of hosts. So he's the vessel that the Lord is using to, to, delay, to relay his message to the 12 tribes of Israel. So the knowledge that Isaiah is talking about is talking about what? He's talking about the commandments, okay? Because remember, hence, the, why Isaiah is asking this question? Because our people did not want to obey. That's why he's asking, who shall he teach his knowledge? Meaning, which out of the 12 tribes of Israel, they are going to listen to me and obey what I'm saying? That's what the Lord is speaking through Isaiah. So go back, Isaiah 28 verse 9 again, Okay. Isaiah chapter 28, verse 9. Go ahead. Whom shall he teach knowledge? Mm -hmm. And who shall he make to understand doctrine? And whom shall he make to understand his doctrine? So out of the 12 tribes of Israel, whom is the Lord going to make understand his doctrine? Not the doctrines that we learn in the world, not Christianity, not Islam, not Voodoo, not Buddhism, none of that. No, his doctrine, God's doctrine. Whom shall he make to understand his doctrine? Okay, watch this. Give me the book of Ecclesiasticus, okay? Give me Sirach chapter 19, verse 19. 
Sarak 19 verse 19. Who shall he make to understand his doctrine? Okay, read that. Ecclesiastes chapter 19 verse 19. Go ahead. The knowledge of the commandments of the Lord is the doctrine of life. Stop right there. The knowledge of the commandments of the Lord. So we know what the knowledge is according to Malachi 2 verse 7. But Sirach is telling you what is the knowledge. The knowledge is the commandment of the Lord. He says that's the doctrine of life that God gave us. So what I, when Isaiah is asking, the Lord is asking through Isaiah, who shall he make to understand his doctrine? Meaning, who shall God make understand his commandments? You understand? That's the question here. Okay, so the answer here is, who shall God make understand his doctrine, his knowledge of the commandments? Which one of you 12 tribes is the Lord going to make and make understand his laws, his commandment, which is his doctrine? Okay, so now let's go back. Give me Proverbs 4, verse 2. Let's just get that also. Proverbs 4, verse 2. Proverbs, chapter 4, verse 2. Go ahead. For I give you good doctrine. Forsake ye not my law. You see what he's saying? He says, I give you good doctrine. Because there's many doctrines out there, but it's not good doctrines. You understand? He says, but I give you good doctrine. Forsake ye not my law. So the good doctrine, which is the which is God's commandments, guess what? That's what that that's right there is that's the good doctrine. The laws of God is the good doctrine. Because the only thing that's good is this Bible on this earth. The most high also. The most high God and this Bible, that's the only thing that's good. That's why he says, For I give you good doctrine. Don't forsake my laws, because my laws is that good doctrine. You understand? So go back to Isaiah. 28 verse 9 again. Isaiah chapter 28 verse 9. Go ahead. Whom shall he teach knowledge? And mm. whom shall he make to understand doctrine? And whom shall he make to understand his doctrine, which is his laws? The good doctrine. Go ahead. Them that are weaned from the milk. Them that are what? Them that are weaned from the milk. Them that are weaned from the milk. So he's giving you the answer right there. He says, those that he's going to teach his knowledge, them, those that he's going to make to understand his doctrine is those that are weaned from the milk. Go ahead. And drawn from the breasts. And drawn from the breasts. So this, you see, he's not only done. The only people that the most High God is going to teach his knowledge, he's going to make under, to understand his doctrine is those individuals, men and women, that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. If you come some other way, you're not gonna get, you're not gonna be taught the knowledge of God, neither will you understand his doctrine. That's what he's telling you right there. You understand? Now watch this. He says, them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breasts. Let's deal with the milk, okay? Get that in First Peter 2, First Peter chapter 2, verse 2. Watch this. First Peter, chapter 2, verse 2. Go ahead. As newborn babes desire mm -hmm. the sincere milk of the word, that ye may grow thereby. You see what he's saying? He says, as newborn babes, as newborn babies, meaning as what? As you come into this truth as a new, you must be a newborn babe. That's what he's saying right there. Get that in First John 5. Okay. As newborn babes. You know what? Give me first Peter's one. First Peter's one. Okay, first Peter's one twenty-three. Watch this. Same book. First Peter's one verse twenty-three. Let's get there. Come on. First Peter chapter one verse twenty-three. Read. Being born again, not being of corruptible seed. Hold on. Being born again. Being born again. To be born again, that must you must be a new babe in Christ. So it says, being born again is going to tell you how you are going to be born again. Keep going. Not of corruptible seed. Not of corruptible seed. Because a seed that is corruptible, meaning it will corrupt you. So Christianity is an example. That's a corruptible seed. You understand? Politics, that's a corruptible seed. You understand? Democracy, 
That is a corruptible seed. Because look at our people. Our people is corrupt. You understand? Mentally and spiritually, our people is corrupt by man-made doctrines. That's why our people trust in oppression. Because politics is oppression. Democracy is oppression. Christianity is oppression. So our people trust in that. You understand? So that's a corruptible seed because it was designed to corrupt you. Okay? Now read the part again. First Peter chapter 1, verse 23. Go ahead. Being born again, not mm -hmm. of corruptible seed. Not of corruptible seed. Go ahead. Wait. But of incorruptible. Mm -hmm. By the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. So he's letting you know how you must be born again. You must be born again through an incorruptible seed, which is the word of God. That's the only way you're going to be born again, to know who you are, to understand what is required of you and how to get the kingdom. The word of God is the only one that is going to work, allow you to be born again. It's going to cause you to be renewed in the spirit of your mind. So now go back to 1 Peter 2, verse 2 again. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 2. Go ahead. As newborn babes. Now it says, as a newborn babe, because remember, the, the word of God, you understand? The word of God is how you are going to be born again. Okay, watch this. You know what? Give me the book of Deuteronomy. Okay, give me Deuteronomy 29, verse 29. The word of God is how you are going to be born again. You understand? Watch this. The word of God, he says, by the word of God. So let's read what the word of God is. Deuteronomy 29, verse 29. Read that. Deuteronomy, chapter 29, verse 29. Go ahead. The secret things belong unto the Lord our God. Read. But those things which are revealed belong unto us and to our children forever. Come on. That we may do all the words of this law. That we may do what? That we may do all the words of this law. That we may do all the words of this law. So guess what? When you are born again, which is by, by incorruptible seed, which is the word of God, God's laws is how you are going to be born again. So when you apply God's laws, it's you being born again. You understand? So now the laws of God is how you are going to be born again. Now go back to 1 Peter's now. 2 verse 2. Watch this. 1 Peter's 2 verse 2. 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 2. Go ahead. As newborn babes mm -hmm. desire the sincere milk of the word that we may grow thereby. That ye may grow thereby. It says, as a newborn babe. Now, because remember, re you see what it says? It says, as newborn babes. So that means that you have to acknowledge yourself as a newborn. But if you think you are, you are still you are grown, if you believe that you are, cannot be taught, if you believe that you know everything, you are not going to acknowledge yourself as a newborn babe. So therefore, you are not going to desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. Everybody get that? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So yes, sir. you have to acknowledge yourself as a newborn babe. If you don't acknowledge yourself as a newborn babe, you are not going to desire the sincere milk of the word. You're going to desire something else other than the sincere milk of the word. And that thing is going to corrupt you because why? It's a corruptible seed. But the word of God is incorruptible. It abideth forever. You understand? So read that again, verse 2. Come on. First Peter chapter 2, verse 2. Read. As newborn babes desire mm -hmm. the sincere milk of the word that ye may grow thereby. So the milk is the word of God. The milk is God's laws. So the milk as a newborn babe, that's what you desire. The milk, which is the word of God, the commandments, because the commandments are going to teach you what right from wrong. That's what the commandments will teach you. Get that in Sirach chapter 17. Okay. Sirach chapter 17 and verse 7. The word of God is what's going to teach you right from wrong. That's the milk. The do's and don'ts, basically. Read that. Sirach 17, verse 7. 
Ecclesiasticus chapter 17, verse 7. Mm -hmm. With all, he filled them with the knowledge of understanding and really? showed them good and evil. You see that? It says, with all, he filled them, that them is us, the 12 tribes of Israel. It says, he filled them with the knowledge of understanding. That knowledge of understanding is the word of God, which is God's laws. It says, and show them good and evil. Because the only way you will be able to tell the difference between right and wrong, good and evil, the laws of God will be able to teach you them. That's the only, the only thing that will teach you right from wrong is God's laws and statutes and his commandments. You understand? So now let's go back. Go back to 1 Peter 2, verse 2 again. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 2. Mm -hmm. As newborn babes desire really? the sincere milk of the word that ye may grow thereby. Now I want to show you something with this. Is that desire the sincere milk of the word that ye may grow thereby. Give me the, because when you are born again, when you are born again, guess what? The, the thing that must change is your mind. You understand? You have to get rid of the garbage that is being dumped in your head by the philosophies that our oppressors have taught us. Now, give me the book of Hebrews 5 verse 12. Hebrews chapter 5 and verse 12. Watch this. Hebrews chapter 5 verse 12. Go ahead. For when, for the time ye ought to be teachers, ye have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God. Read the verse again. Read it slow for me. Hebrews chapter 5 verse 12. Come on. For when, for the time ye ought to be teachers. For when, for the time ye ought, you were supposed to be teaching. It says, what, what happens next? Go ahead. Ye have need that one should teach you again. Stop right there. It says there's an is necessary that you be taught again. So how are you? How are you going to be taught again? Because the way you've been taught before you come into this truth, you were not taught, you were taught incorrectly. So now when you come into the truth, you are be, you are being born again, meaning what? We're not talking about what the garbage they do in the Christian church. We're not talking about that because they are not born again. You understand? They, are, they say they are born again, but the man is still whoremongering. The black woman is still whoring herself. They don't take care of their kids. You understand? They eat pork, shrimp, lobster, crab. They buy and sell and cook and work on the Sabbath day. They celebrate Christmas, birthdays, New Year, Mother's Day, Father, all of which is not in the Bible. So they are not born again. Now, watch this. It says... That part right there when it says, for when for the time you ought to be teachers, you have need that one teach you again. That's the key right there that you want to focus on before we continue on with the verse. It says, you must, you, there's a necessary that you are taught again because you are born again as a newborn babe. You need the milk. And how you are going to grow is, how you, is, is based on how you are taught. Now watch this. Give me the book of Romans chapter 3. This is how you are going to be taught again. Because the way that you've been taught, it was incorrect. Now, Romans 3, read verse 3. Romans 3, verse 3. Watch this. Romans chapter 3, verse 3. Go ahead. For what if some did not believe? Mm -hmm. Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? He says, shall, what if some don't believe? Because some don't believe that you have to, must be born again. That's why Christ says, marvel not that I say unto you, you must be born again. Because our people, they marvel. They get shocked that you have to be born again. You understand? So now it says, what if some did not believe? Remember what we read in Isaiah. It says, whom shall he make, excuse me, who shall he teach his knowledge? Who shall, whom shall he make to understand his doctrine? The only, way, the only ones, men and women of the 12 tribes of Israel, the, those that the most High God is going to make to understand, he's going to teach his knowledge and make to understand his doctrines, is those that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. That's why he says, but what if some did not believe? Those that don't believe is those that are not, that are not going to be weaned from, the, that are not weaned from the milk 
and drawn from the breasts. They are the ones that will not believe. You understand? Read that again. Verse 3. Come on. Romans chapter 3, verse 3. Go ahead. For what if some did not believe? Mm -hmm. Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? Shall their unbelief change what is written? No. Keep going. Come on. God forbid. Yea. Mm, no. Read. Let God be true, but every mm. man a liar, as Come it on. is written. Stop right there. So the 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 prophets are telling you. Do you see what we read in in Hebrews five when it says, "You have need that one teach you again." This is how you are going to be taught again the right way. He says, "As it is what, as it is written." That's how you must be taught again, as it is written. Because if you taught according to as it is written, guess what happens next? Keep going, read. That thou mightest be justified in thy sayings. That you may be justified in what you say, because you can prove everything you say in the Holy Bible. Go ahead. And mightest overcome when thou art judged. You are going to overcome when men come against you. You understand? You are going to overcome. That's what he's saying right there. So you must be taught as it is written. Okay, let's go back now. Hebrews 5, verse 12 again. Hebrews chapter 5, verse 12. Read. For when, for the time ye ought to be teachers, ye have need that one teach you again. Ye have, ye have need that one teach you again as it is written. Go ahead. Which be the first principles of the oracles of God. You see that? The first principles of the oracles of God is that you must be taught again. And how must you be taught again? As it is written. Go ahead. And are become such as have need of milk and not of strong meat. So now he's saying the way you are going to be taught again, you are going to be taught again as it is written, because that's the first principles of the oracles of God. To be what? To be born again as a newborn babe. You have to acknowledge yourself you are a child when you come in. Doesn't matter what age you are. You must acknowledge yourself as a child. Then it says, it says, I become such a need of milk, which is the sincere milk of the word, and not of strong meat, meaning nothing heavy, just the basics, the foundation that is going to teach you right from wrong. You understand? Now watch this. Go back. Go back to Isaiah. Okay. Go back to Isaiah 28. Isaiah 28, verse 9 again. Isaiah chapter 28, verse 9. Go ahead. Whom shall he teach knowledge? And uh -huh. whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Really? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from mm -hmm. the breasts. So the milk is the word of God. The milk is God's laws and drawn from the breasts. Let's deal with that part. Give me the book of St. Esdras, okay? Give me Second Esdras chapter 8. Second Ezra 8 verse 10. We're going to read down. Okay, Second Ezra chapter 8 verse 10. We're dealing with the breasts. It says, drawn, we wean from the milk and drawn from the breasts. Read that. Second Ezra chapter 8 verse 10. Come on. Second Ezra chapter 8 verse 10. Read. For thou hast commanded out of the parts of the body, Read. that is to say, out of the breasts, milk out of to the be what? given. Out of the breasts. Out of the breasts. Out of the breasts. Plural. Just like what Isaiah is saying. It says, out of that is to say, out of the breasts, milk should be what? Milk to be given. Go ahead. Which is the fruit of the breasts. We see that thing? It says, out of the breasts, milk, with milk is to be given. What is the milk? God's laws. Out of the breasts, milk is to be given which is God's commandments, which is the fruit of the breasts. So the milk is the fruit of the breast. That fruit is what is the milk, which is what? God's laws. Go ahead. That the thing which is fashioned may be nourished for a time, till thou deposest it to thy mercy. You see that thing? It says that the thing which is fashioned, the thing that is fashioned is talking about us. 
as a newborn baby. You understand? As a newborn baby, it says what? That the thing which is fashioned may be nourished for a time. Meaning what? Weaned. So you're, you're, you're going to what? You have to, there's a set time that is set for you to do what? To drink the milk. You're only going to feed on milk and nothing else. You understand? It says, for a time, till thou, dis till thou dispossessed it to thy mercy. Then you're going to be dealing with the mercy of the Lord because now that you know right from wrong, guess what? It's time for you to do what? To act according to now that you know the laws of God, you're going to be able to make decisions based on the milk that you've received. Now you are under the, the mercy of the law because as a child, you don't know anything. Now you must be taught right from wrong. Now that's the mercy of the mercy of the Lord is that you abide in God's laws. You abide in his mercy. You understand? Go ahead. Thou brought it up with thy righteousness. Go ahead. And nurtured it in thy law. Mm. And reformest it with thy judgment. You see that? You see that part right there? So verse 12 is explaining verse 10. That's why it says, Thou brought it up with thy righteousness. The righteousness is the milk that comes from the breast, which is the fruit of the breast. Then it says, and nurtures it in thy law. So when a baby is being nurtured, you understand, is because is they are sucking from their mother's breasts. So likewise, when we come into this truth as a newborn baby, you must be you must cleave to the laws of God daily, like a baby sucking on his mother's breast. That's what the Lord is telling us right there. He says you are going to be nurtured in God's laws, and He says reformes it with thy judgment. Meaning what? The only way the Lord is going to change you is when judgment comes because judgment is going to what is called is correction. The Lord will correct you when you go off. So you come back. That's why it says, reformest it with thy judgment. That's what, the, that's what Isaiah is telling us right there. So the milk is how you are going to what is how you are going to grow. That's the first step. That's what the Lord is teaching us right there. Now watch this. Give me the book of Isaiah 66 verse 11. We're still dealing with the breasts, okay? Remember, we read in 2nd Esdras, because I'm, I'm, some of you might have missed this. Read 2nd Esdras 8 verse 10 again. Watch this. 2nd Esdras chapter 8 verse 10. Go ahead. For thou hast commanded out of the parts of the body, that is to say, out of the breasts, milk to be given, mm -hmm. which is the fruit of the breasts. So now out of the breast is milk that must be given to a, to a newborn, to the newborn baby. So it's letting you know that the breast is not the actual breast on a woman. It's talking about the laws of God, the Bible. Go ahead. That the thing which is fashioned may be nourished for a time mm -hmm. till thou dispossessest it to thy mercy. Now watch this. Jump up. To verse 8. I'm going to show you something in this verse right here. Second Ezra chapter 8 verse 8. For when the body is fashioned now in the mother's womb. Go ahead. And thou givest it members. The members that took about the body parts now. It says when, for when the body is fashioned now in the mother's womb. Meaning a woman conceives seed. Then what happens next? It says and thou givest it members. The Lord is the one that does that. It's not science. Is the most side that does it, right? Thy creature is preserved in fire and water. You see that? He says the creature, which is what? The, 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 it's talking about the, 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 the child in the stomach. It says what? It says it's preserved in fire and water. Okay, because it's hot up in there. Go ahead. And nine months does thy workmanship endure thy creature, which is created in her. The woman, the hair is the woman. So this creature that will be growing for nine months in the mother's womb, the Mosa is the one that is preserving that, that life in what? In fire and water. Go ahead. But that which keepeth and is kept shall both be preserved. So he says, but that which keepeth and is kept shall both be preserved. Talk about what? The child in the stomach. Go ahead. And when the time comes, the womb preserved delivereth up the things that grew in it. 
You see that thing? So you are in your mother's womb. Now it's time for you to be delivered out of your mother's womb. Guess what you need in order for you to survive? You need the milk. So Ezra is giving us a similitude here when it comes to God's laws. When you are born again, you come into this truth. You need that. That's your focus. Your focus is the milk. You understand? Now watch this. Jump down to verse 12 now. Second Ezra chapter 8 verse 12. Right? Thou broughtest it up with thy righteousness and nurtured it in thy law and reformest it with thy judgment. You see that? So now this baby is going to be brought up in the righteousness of the Mosai, which is God's laws according to Deuteronomy 6.25, Luke 1 and 6, and nurtures it in thy law. So this child is going to be brought up in righteousness and is going to be nurtured in God's laws and reformed, it is going to be reformed in the judgment of the law, meaning correction. Correction is going to help the child to work to be on the right track. And correction comes from what? The laws of God, the commandments. You understand? Now watch this. Now, give me the book of Isaiah 66, verse 11. Isaiah 66, verse 11. Because when you read the book of Isaiah, you read the book of Esther, they are saying similar things. Watch this. Isaiah 66, verse 11. We what you got? Come on. Isaiah chapter 66, verse 11. Mm -hmm. That ye may suck and be satisfied with the breasts of her consolations, that ye Wait. may milk out that and ye may be what? delighted. That ye may milk out. That ye may milk out. That ye may milk out. Remember what Ezra says. It says, milk to be given, which is the fruit of the breast. Milk to be given. Milk to be given. That's why it says that ye may milk out. Go ahead. That ye may milk out and be delighted with the abundance of her glory. Which is God's commandments. You understand? God's laws. That's what he's saying right there. You understand? Jump up to verse 9 so we understand. Isaiah chapter 66 verse 9. Shall I bring to the birth and not cause to bring forth, say mm -hmm. the Lord. Come on. Wait. Shall I cause to bring forth and shut the womb, says the Lord. Because that's what we read in, in 2 Isaiah 8, verse 10. Okay, verse 8, 8, verse 8 through 9. That's what Isaiah is saying the same thing. Go ahead. Rejoice ye with Jerusalem, and be glad with her, all mm -hmm. ye that love her. Go ahead. Rejoice for joy with her, all ye that mourn for her. That's us that mourn for Jerusalem. Go ahead. That ye may suck and be satisfied with the breast of her consolations. Because the breast is going to call, is, going, is what? Is our, is our consolation. You understand? The, because us sucking the milk out, guess what? That consolation prize is the kingdom of the most high God on earth. Right? That ye may milk out and be delighted with the abundance of her glory. You see that? So the milk is the word of God that we must milk out out of the mother's breasts. You understand? The Bible. That's what he's talking about right there. Give me the book of Proverbs chapter 5 verse 19. I'm just getting more precepts for you brothers and sisters. Okay, write these down. The milk. Okay, read that. Proverbs 5 verse 19. Come on. Proverbs chapter 5 verse 19. Read. Let her be as the loving hind and pleasant robe. Let her breast satisfy thee at all times. Go ahead. And be thou refreshed always with her love. You see that thing? The hair here is wisdom. Jump up to verse 1 so we know who's the subject. Okay, come on. Proverbs chapter 5 verse 1. Read. My son, attend unto my wisdom. And mm -hmm. bow thine ear to my understanding. So the wisdom is the subject matter. Jump down to verse 19 now. Read that again. Proverbs chapter 5 verse 19. Mm -hmm. Let her be as the loving hind. Let wisdom be as the loving hind. Go ahead. And pleasant robe. Read. Let a breath satisfy thee at all times. Go ahead. And be thou ravished always with her love. So he says, let her breasts, which is what? 
the laws of God. Because the breasts, what is the fruit of the breast? The milk. So he's saying, let the milk satisfy you at all times and be thou ravished always with her love. You see what the Lord is telling us? He says, you must be ravished always with the milk that comes out of the breast, which is what? The commandment, the Bible. You understand? That's what's going to satisfy you at all times. When you live your life, you are, you are not fulfilled is because you are not drinking the milk. That's why you're not satisfied. Because God's laws will what? Will teach you to have the spirit of what? Not the spirit of covetousness. But when it comes to the laws of God, you can be as covetous as you want. When it comes to God's laws, drink until you puke and you're not going to puke. You'll keep drinking forever. You understand? Watch this. Now, give me the book of Song of Solomon chapter 4. Song of Solomon chapter 4 and verse 5. Song of Solomon 4 verse 5. Song of Solomon chapter 4 verse 5. Come on. Thy two breasts are like two young rows that are twins, mm -hmm. which feed among the lilies. So you see what he's saying? is says, thy two breasts are like the two young rows that are twins, which feed among the lilies. Because he said when he says they are twins, meaning what? Because remember, the breasts making reference to the Holy Bible, the whole Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, including the Apocrypha. So what is he saying? He says they are like twins, meaning what? You read the old, you read the new. Guess what? You need both. You cannot just be sucking on one. You must suck on two of them. Why? Because you need new and old together because you are, that's how you're going to be satisfied thereby. Now watch this. Give me Song of Solomon chapter 7 verse 3. Song of Solomon 7 verse 3. Read that. Song of Solomon chapter 7 verse 3. Go ahead. Thy two breasts are like two young rows that are twins. You see, he keep mentioning that are twins, that are twins, because you need both of them. You understand? One is not better than the other. No, they are equal. You understand? And you need both. Jump down to verse 7. Song of Solomon, chapter 7, verse 7. Mm -hmm. This, thy stature, is like a palm tree, and thy breast to clusters of grapes. Go ahead. I said, I will go up to the palm tree, I will take hold of the bows thereof. Great. Now also, thy breasts shall be as clusters of the vine, and the smell of right. thy nose like apples. You see what he's saying? It says, as therefore, it says, now also thy breasts shall be as clusters of the vine, and the smell of thy nose like apples. Now, okay, I'm not going to just stay focused on this chapter right here. What King Solomon is explaining here is going into what? Wisdom. You understand? The, the sincere milk of the word that comes from the breast, you understand? Which is God's laws. That's what Solomon is saying right here. You understand? Now watch this. Jump down to verse 11. Read verse 11. I'm going to show you that these two breasts, you understand, they are for who? He's going to tell you who they are for. Read verse 10, verse 11. Go ahead. Song of Solomon, chapter 7, verse 11. Read. Come, my beloved, let us go mm -hmm. forth into the field. Let us lodge in the villages. He says, come, my beloved, my beloved, my beloved. Jump down to verse 13. You see, the breasts, these breasts, which is represents what the, the laws of God. He says, they are from his beloved. Read verse 13 now. Come on. Song of Solomon, chapter 7, verse 13. Mm-hmm. The mandrakes give us men, mm -hmm. and at our gates are all manner of pleasant fruits, new okay. and old. What did he say? New and old. He says the mandrakes give us men, and at our gates are all manner of pleasant fruits. So let's deal with that. Give me that in Deuteronomy chapter 6. I mean Deuteronomy chapter 16. Okay, Deuteronomy 16 verse 18, it says, at the gate, you're going to find all manner of what? Pleasant fruits. Now read that. Deuteronomy 16 verse 18. Watch this. Deuteronomy chapter 16 verse 18. Come on. Judges and officers shall thou make thee in all thy gates. You see that? Judges and officers shall thou make thee in all thy gates. 
So at the gates, you're going to find the leadership, the judges, the officers. Go ahead. Which the Lord thy God giveth thee uh -huh. throughout thy tribes. Throughout the 12 tribes of Israel. Go ahead. And they shall judge the people with just judgment. They shall judge the people with just judgment. So what are they going to use? They will use the laws of God to judge the people. So at the gates, you're going to find, it says, all manner of pleasant fruit. Those pleasant fruits, what is that? The laws of God. Now let's go back. Song of Solomon chapter 8. Okay. I mean, chapter 7, verse 13 again. Song of Solomon chapter 7, verse 13. Mm -hmm. The mandrakes give a smell, and at our gates are all manner of pleasant fruits. You see that at our gates, meaning what? Because that's where the judges are. The judges have what? They've got all manner of pleasant fruits. What is that? The laws of God, the commandments of the Most High God to judge the people with just judgment. Go ahead. New and old. What did he say? New and old. So the breasts in verse 3, in verse 7 and 8, they represent new, they represent the fruits that come out of the new and the old. Go ahead. Which I have laid up for thee, O oh my beloved. So who's the, who's the beloved? Get that in Baruch 3. Baruch 3 verse 36 real quick. I'm going somewhere. I'm taking it slow this day. Okay, I'm building, I'm, I'm building something here. So pay attention. Baruch 3 36. We what you got? Baruch chapter 3 verse 36. Go ahead. He has found out all the way of knowledge mm -hmm. and has given it unto Jacob the seven and to Israel his beloved. You see that? And to Israel, his beloved. So the way of knowledge was given to us because we are God's beloved. So go back to Song of Solomon 7, verse 13 again. Song of Solomon, chapter 7, verse 13. Go ahead. The mandrakes give a smell, and at our gates are all manner of pleasant fruits, new and Wait. old. It says... All manner of pleasant fruits, new and old. Go ahead. Which I have laid up for thee, O oh my beloved. Which I have laid up for thee, O oh my beloved. Meaning what? Israel. The 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. So these pleasant fruits, they come out of the old and the new. So what is that talking about? Give me the book of Matthew chapter 13 verse 52. We know the breast is the laws of God. God's laws is the whole Bible which is the Old Testament and the New Testament. Guess what? These pleasant fruits, they come out of the New Testament and the Old Testament and the New Testament. That's why it says new and old. New Testament, Old Testament. Watch this. Get that. Read that Matthew 13, verse 52. Come on. Matthew chapter 13, verse 52. Go ahead. Then said he unto them, therefore, every scribe, which is instructed unto the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man that is an householder, which mm -hmm. bringeth forth out of his treasure things new and old. You see that? Which bringeth forth out of his treasure things new and old. Which bringeth forth out of his treasure things new and old. So guess what? These things that are going to come out of what? That are going to come out of this scribe is things new and old. The same thing that we read in Song of Solomon. Watch this. Matthew 12, verse 35. Read that. Matthew chapter 12, verse 35. Come on. A good man out of the good treasure of the heart. Out of the good treasure of the what? Out of the good treasure of the heart. Out of the good treasure of the mind. That's what the heart means. The mind, out of the good treasure of the mind, go ahead. Bring us forth good things. They're going to bring what? Bring us forth good things. Bring us forth good things. Bring us forth good things. Get that in First Timothy 1 verse 8 real quick. So it says, this man, this good man, out of the good treasure of the heart, is going to bring forth good things out of the good treasure of his mind. Let's get that. First Timothy 1. When it says, we know that the law is good. Read that. 
First Timothy chapter one verse eight. Come on. But we know that the law is good. The law is good. The law is good. So we know that the law is good. So go back to Matthew 12, verse 35 again. So we understand what is good. The good things that are going to come out of the good treasure of this good man is what is the laws of God. Okay, read that. Matthew 12, 35. Come on. Matthew chapter 12, verse 35. Read. A good man out of the good treasure of the heart bringeth forth good things. So now, out of the good treasure of this good man, gonna come forth good things, which is the laws of God. You understand? That's the things new and old. The things new and old that are coming from the pleasant fruits. The pleasant. What is the pleasant fruits? The milk that come out of the breast, because the milk is the fruit of the breast. So that's what he's explaining here. What is he talking about? God's laws. Out of the good treasure, meaning your good treasure is your mind. What's going to come out of it? The laws of God, because you are instructed out of God's laws. You understand? Now, watch this. Give me, give me the book of Deuteronomy 4, verse 1. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 1. I'm going to show you the importance of growing in this truth. The first focus is the milk. You must focus on the milk. You understand? Watch this. Deuteronomy chapter 4. We're going to start at verse 1. Read that. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 1. Read. Now therefore hearken, O Israel, unto uh -huh. the statutes and unto the judgments which I teach you, for to do them that ye may live and go in and possess the land which the Lord God of your fathers giveth you. So now Moses is addressing the 12 tribes of Israel. He says, Hearken, O Israel, meaning pay attention, and unto the statutes and unto the judgments which I teach you. Because Moses taught us the, taught us the statutes and the judgments for to, for, for to do them. He didn't teach us so that we just know them, but we don't apply them. No, he taught us that we may do them. We might, we might apply them. You understand? Okay. It says, which I'll teach you for to do them that ye may live. So he's teaching us how to actually live. He's giving us the breath of life here. Read that again. Verse 1. Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 1. Read. Now therefore hearken, O Israel, unto the statutes mm. and unto the judgments which I teach you, for to do them that ye may live. For to do them that ye may what? For to do them that ye may live. So he's giving us the breath of life here. Go ahead. Come on. And go in and possess the land which the Lord God of your fathers giveth you. So that's the condition. You, you, I'm teaching, the Lord says, I'm going to teach you statues using Moses because he was the mediator for to do them that you may live. Okay. We have may have sense and go in and possess the land which the Lord your God giveth thee. So it was always conditional. You keep the laws, you're going to get the land. Read on. Come on. Ye shall not add unto the word which I command you. Meaning what? Don't bring your own things into this book. Don't add your own imaginations, your own feelings and so forth. This is don't add unto which I command you. Read. Neither shall ye diminish aught from it. Meaning don't take, and don't take anything that's written out of the Bible. Read on. That ye may keep the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you. You see that? That you may keep the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you. So the law says, don't add to the Bible, don't remove from it. That's a commandment. You understand? Read on. Your eyes have seen what the Lord did because of Peol Peol. Mm -hmm. For all the men that followed Peol Peol, the Lord thy God had destroyed them from among you. So because when we, when we, when the, when we worship idols, the, that's what the Lord did. You understand? He says, the Lord thy God had destroyed them from among you. So the nations that were in, in, in the land that we needed to possess, guess what they was doing? They was worshiping idols. You understand? So the Lord is using Moses to teach us that, listen, you saw what the, what the Lord did to the nations that were worshiping idols. You must make sure that you don't do the same thing. 
lest you be destroyed also. Go ahead. But ye that did cleave unto the Lord your God are alive, every one of you this day. You see what he's saying? So, of uh, course, remember, Israel, we always, we all, we have a history of just worshiping idols. That's what the Lord is saying. So now he's saying, listen, but ye that did cleave unto the Lord your God are alive, every one of you this day. So those of our forefathers that cleave unto the Lord did not follow after the customs of the heathens that were round about us. Guess what? He says they are all alive. All He says you are all alive this day. Because you did what? Remember verse, verse 1 says, you was for to do them that you may live and go in and possess the land which the Lord God gave unto your fathers. You understand? So now he's repeating it again because we have a history of just being forgetful. Okay, go ahead. Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 5. Behold, okay. I have taught you statutes and judgments, even as the mm -hmm. Lord my God commanded me, that ye should okay. do so in the land whither ye go to possess it. You see what he's saying? He's I've taught you statutes and judgment, even as the Lord my God commanded me. Because Moses was also commanded the laws of God. Then not only that, but he was commanded to teach us. That's why it says, even as the Lord my God commanded me, that you should do so in the land whether you go to possess it. Go ahead. Keep therefore and do them. For this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations. So he says, keep therefore and do them. Keep therefore and do what? The commandments. Keep the commandment and do the commandments because this is going to be your understanding in the sight of all these nations. You understand? Go ahead. We shall hear all these statutes and say, surely mm -hmm. this great nation is a wise and understanding people. You see that the, the nations are not going to say that if we're not keeping these laws. The only thing that makes us special, that separates us from all these nations is because of the laws of God. Give me that in Leviticus 20. Okay. Leviticus 20, verse 26. Leviticus chapter 20, verse 26. Mm -hmm. And ye shall be holy unto me, for I, the Lord, really? am holy, and have Come severed on. you from other people, that ye should be mine. You see what the Lord did? The most High God, he severed, and he separated us from all these other nations. That's the other people. Like you read in 2nd Ezra 6, verse 55, it says, I've severed you from all these other people. How did the Lord sever us? He gave us his laws in the sight of these nations. That's our understanding. And that was that's what makes us special. That's what makes us peculiar from all these other nations because of what the laws of God was given to us. So go back to Deuteronomy 4 now. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 6 again. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 6. Go ahead. Keep therefore and do them. For this mm -hmm. is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations, which shall hear mm -hmm. all these statutes and say, Surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. The only time when the nations will say that about us is if we uphold and observe these laws. That's what makes us special. That's what makes us peculiar. From these nations, the way we dress, what we eat, how we deal with one another, how we raise our children up. You understand? All of that is based upon the laws of God. Without God's laws, we are not special at all. The laws of God is what makes us special. Go ahead. For what nation is there so great, who has God so nigh unto them, as the Lord our God is in all things that we call upon him for? You see that there's no nation that is like us, that we, they, the nations cannot call upon the Lord. We can. Why? Because the because of the mercy that he showed to our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, because of the covenant that he made with them for our sakes. For our sakes, because of that covenant, that's why now it says we can call upon the Lord for whatever problems we've got, we call upon the Lord. And then the prophets will open unto us the scriptures to see where to go in order to solve the problems. Go ahead. And what nation is there so great that had statutes and judgment so righteous as all this law, which I said before you this day? You see what it's telling you? It's telling us these statutes and these judgments are the laws. It's as so righteous as all this law, which I said before you this day. So there's no nation that has these statutes and these laws 
that was given to us. You understand? Go ahead. Only take heed to your to thyself and keep thy soul diligently, lest thou forget the things which thine eyes have seen, and lest they depart mm. from thy heart all the days of thy life. But teach them thy sons and thy sons' sons. So what is the Lord telling us here? Because remember in verse 8, he says, there's no nation that received these statues. Get that in Psalms real quick. Okay. Get that in Psalms 147, verse 19. So we understand what he's saying right there, what Moses is teaching us. Psalms 147, verse 19 and 20. Psalms chapter 147, verse 19. Come he on. showeth his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. Go ahead. He has not dealt so with any nation. And really? as for his judgments, they have not known them. Praise ye the Lord. So you see what he's telling us? They no, the nations never received this. We are the only ones that receive these laws. That's why we are punished more than all nations on this earth. Because of what? Because of breaking God's laws. But the laws was given to us. And that's the reason why we are special to the Lord. Go back to Deuteronomy 4. Okay, read verse 9 again. Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 9. Go ahead. Only take heed to thyself and keep mm -hmm. thy soul diligently, lest thou forget the things which thine eyes have seen. We just came out of Egypt. We just came out of Egypt and we saw the miracle. We saw the judgment that came upon the Egyptians, the plagues. You understand? All the plagues that came upon Egypt. And when we parted the red, when the Lord, when Moses, <clears throat> when the Lord used Moses to part the Red Sea, we saw the miracles and so forth. So he says, don't forget the things which your eyes have seen. Okay, go ahead. And lest they depart from thy heart all the days of thy life. Meaning you don't remember. That you don't remember. So what is he telling us? He, the Mosai is telling us, listen, if you don't keep these laws, you are going to forget the things that I've done for you. You are going to forget. That's what he's telling us right there. Because remember, from verse 1 all the way to verse 8, he is telling us, that, listen, keep these laws. That these nations, you can be wise and understanding people in the sight of these nations. That's what he's saying. He is letting us know, he said, listen, only take heed to thyself, meaning beware. And keep thy soul diligently, meaning what? Stay in the spirit. Apply the laws of God diligently. Lest thou forget the things which thine eyes have seen. And lest they depart from thy heart all the days of thy life. And that's exactly what happened. Go ahead. But what? But, but teach them thy sons and thy sons' sons. He says, but you must teach them your sons and your sons' sons. So what is he saying? In order for you to continue to preserve this great knowledge that I've given you, teach, the, teach these laws to your children. So that when you're gone, they will continue on with it. That's what he's saying. Right. Especially. Is that it on that day? Okay, come on. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 10. Great. Especially the day that thou stoodest before the Lord thy God in Oreb, when the mm. Lord said unto me, Gather me the people together, and I will make them hear my words, that they may mm. learn to fear me all the days they shall live upon the earth, and that they mm. may teach their children. You see what the Lord is saying? He says, I'm warning, he says, especially the day that thou stoodest before the Lord thy God in Horeb, when the Lord said unto me, gather me the people together, and I will make them hear my words, that they may learn to fear me all the days that they shall live upon the earth, that they may teach their children. So even the Lord is said, listen, bring them up here, and I'm going to teach them. So guess what? The most that God is reminding us, and listen, everything that you were taught, the things that you've seen, you understand? When Moses went to the mount and so forth, and he came back and he taught you the laws, he says, you must not forget that. And you, not only that, you must teach these laws and the events that have happened, teach them to your children. Meaning what? Teach your children history. Let them know about their forefathers. That's what he's saying. Now watch this. Jump down to verse 13. Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 13. 
Go ahead. And he declared unto you this covenant, which he commanded mm. you to perform, even ten commandments. And he even wrote what? them upon even ten commandments. You see that he's letting you know what the covenant is. He says, uh, and he declared unto you his covenant, which he commanded you to perform, meaning to do, like we read in verse 1. Even ten commandments. So that's the covenant. That's the covenant. Okay, because that's the laws. Okay, go ahead. And he wrote them upon two tables of stone. So the Lord wrote upon two tables of stone. Get that in Exodus 31. Exodus chapter 31. Watch this. I'm going to show you something here. Pay close attention. Exodus 31 verse 18. Read there. Exodus chapter 31 verse 18. Go ahead. And he gave unto Moses when he had made an end of communion with him upon Mount Sinai, two tables of mm -hmm. testimony, tables of stone, written with the finger of God. You see that? The Most High, the Lord is the one that wrote those ones. He wrote those ones, gave to Moses to come and teach us. You understand? And Moses wrote, I mean, the five books, but the Ten Commandments is that I wrote them and gave them to Moses to teach you. So when the Mosai, when the Lord came, when the when when Moses came down to teach us from Mount Sinai, he taught us the law. He went back. He wrote more books, more books. You understand? Which is what? Which is where the Ten Commandments and they branch out of everything we're reading right now: Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Genesis, and so forth. Mm -hmm. So let's go back Deuteronomy four. Deuteronomy chapter 4, read verse 13 one more again. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 13. Read. And he declared unto you his covenant, which he commanded you to perform, even mm -hmm. ten commandments. Come on. And he wrote them upon two tables of stone. Read. And the Lord commanded me at that time to teach you statutes and judgments that ye might do them in the land whither you go over to possess it. You notice that he's repeating himself again because Israel, we slow. In verse 14, he's repeating once again. You understand? He says, he says what? And the Lord commanded me at that time to teach you statutes and judgment that you might, what? you might do them in the land whether you go over to possess it. We read that in verse 1. We read that in verse 1. We read that in verse 2. We read that in verse... Five and six, which is the stipulation. You understand? So he keep repeating it over and over. Why? Because Moses is letting us know in the spirit that, listen, you have no idea what's going to befall you. You better hold on to these laws. That's what he's telling us. Keep reading. Watch this. Take ye therefore good heed unto yourselves. Mm. For ye saw no manner of similitude on the day that the Lord spake unto you in Horeb out of the midst of the fire. You see what he's telling us? Now, I'm going to show you something. He says, take ye therefore, he says, take ye therefore good heed unto yourselves. It's the same thing he said in verse 9. It says, for you saw no manner of similitude on the day that the Lord spake unto you in Horeb out of the midst of a fire. What does he mean, the midst of the similitude? Jump up to verse 12. Because so we understand what he means when he says, you saw no manner of similitude. Because you know how Israel is. I'm going to show you that. Read verse 12. Come on. Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 12. Mm -hmm. And the Lord spake unto you out of the midst of the fire. Ye heard the voice of the words, but saw no similitude. Only ye heard a voice. He said, but you didn't see any shape of anything. You understand? But he says, you only heard a voice. Why is he saying that? Jump down. Okay, read verse 16. I'm going to show you why he said you only had a voice. You didn't see no similitude because he knows the most he knows us how we are. Read that. Verse 16. Come on. Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 16. Come on. Lest you corrupt yourselves. Lest you do what? And lest you corrupt yourselves. Because he said, listen, if I showed you some kind of a shape, a similitude, 
and some kind of an image nyan, I know what's going to happen to you. He says, you're going to correct yourself if I do that. Okay, go ahead. And make you a graven image, the similitude of any figure, the likeness of male or female. You see what? The Lord is telling us that that's exactly what Israel was going to do. He is telling us that Israel was going to do that thing. We are well, he says, we're going to make uh, we're gonna make graven image of the similitude if the Lord had showed us that. You understand? The similitude of any figure, if we had shown some kind of a figure, you understand? He says that's exactly what we were gonna do. Then he says, the likeness of male or female, we were gonna do that thing. I'm gonna prove that thing. I'm gonna show you something. So what is he teaching us here? What is the Lord teaching? What is the Lord saying what we, is, what, that we must not do? What is he saying? So, Samuel, what is the Lord saying right here? What is he saying we mustn't do? Okay, Brother Tabo, what is the Lord saying here? Shalom, sir. Shalom, Israel. Shalom, more praises. Uh, the Lord is teaching us here, sir, not to worship graven images. Not to do what? Not to worship or bow down to graven images. That's exactly Stitching. what he's saying. Where would you go to prove that? Uh, in Exodus chapter 20, verse... Uh, verse Which commandment four, is that? This is the second commandment, sir. That's the second commandment. So let's, let, let's get that. Exodus 20, verse 4. Read that. Exodus chapter 20, verse 4. Read. Right. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven images. Now, now, notice this, right? Here we are in the book of Deuteronomy, right? Remember, the reason why he's saying this is because in Exodus, he's already explained to us we mustn't do that. Anybody get in? Anybody see that? Yes, sir. In Exodus, he's explained. He taught us. He taught us in Exodus that we mustn't. We mustn't want. We must not make any graven images to worship. Deuteronomy chapter 4, he is repeating it again because he knows he's already told us, but the reason why he's repeating it again is because we're slow. We're rebellious. We're easily, we're easily persuaded. Because why? We are not diligent in this business. Okay? Now, read that. Verse 4 again. Exodus chapter 20, verse 4. Read. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven images, any mm -hmm. graven image, or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or Wait. that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. You see what he's saying? He says, don't make any graven image. He's going to tell you why. Go ahead. Verse 5. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor mm -hmm. serve them. Because you, you know why. The reason why he says don't bow down to them, nor serve them. Because we're supposed to bow down to the Lord and serve him. But the reason why is go back to Deuteronomy chapter 4. Because the brother was correct. He's saying the commandment says don't, don't make unto thee any graven images to bow down to them. Because guess what? Before we make those graven images, what would be, what would be the thought that we will have? I, I want to see who can pick this up. Get Deuteronomy 4, verse 16 again. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 16. Go ahead. Lest you corrupt yourselves and make you a graven image, mm -hmm. the similitude of any figure, the likeness of male or female. So now he's saying, lest you corrupt yourself and make you a graven image. We read that that would be breaking the second commandment. But for you to even get to the second commandment, it means you've done what? You've already broken the first. You understand? Yes, sir. For you to make that graven image that you are going to bow down and serve it is letting you know the first commandment is broken already. Because what does the first commandment say? Brother Tabo, what does it say? Shalom, sir. Shalom. Thou, thou, thou shalt not serve any other gods before me. Okay, let's get that. Exodus 20, verse 3. Read that. Exodus chapter 20, verse 3. Mm -hmm. 
Thou shalt have no other gods before me. You see that? So for you to make these great images in Deuteronomy 4.16, it means you've already broken the first. And remember, this is Exodus after Genesis. Now we are in Deuteronomy, the fifth book, the last book of that Moses wrote. Guess what? He's letting us know. He's reminding us that don't break the commandments that I gave unto you. And the next chapter in Deuteronomy 5 is repeating the Exodus 20. Again. You see that thing? Now, go back to Deuteronomy 4, verse 16. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 16. Go ahead. Lest ye corrupt yourselves and make you a graven image, the mm -hmm. similitude of any figure, the likeness of male or female. Right. The likeness of any beast that is on the earth. The likeness mm -hmm. of any winged fowl that flies in the air. Go ahead. The likeness of anything that creepeth on the ground. The likeness of any fish that is in the waters beneath the earth. So now you see what he's doing? He's repeating Exodus 20. Let's get there. Go back to Exodus 20 verse 4. We're going to read down now. Exodus chapter 20, verse 4. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or mm -hmm. that is in the waters under the earth. Come on. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them. For I, the Lord, thy God, am a jealous God visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. So he's letting you know the people that hate him is those that worship other gods, is those that make graven images to worship and serve them. Those are the people that hate the Lord. So now he's telling us here in Deuteronomy 4, he says, don't hate me. And by what? By worshiping, by me, by worshiping other gods, making graven images and buying yourself to them and saving them. But I want to show you something. Get Deuteronomy chapter 4. Okay. Deuteronomy chapter 4. Read verse 19. Watch this. Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 19. Mm -hmm. And lest thou lift up thine eyes unto heaven, and mm -hmm. when thou seest the sun and the moon and the stars, even all the host of heaven, should us be driven to worship them and serve them, which the Lord thy God has divided unto all nations, all nations under the whole heaven. So now is giving an exact is, is now is elaborating on what we read in verse 17 when it says, The likeness of any beast that isn't on the earth, the likeness of any wing fowl that is in the air. So it says the similitude of any figure. Okay. So watch this. Here in verse 19 is, ex is, is, is expounding on what we read in Exodus 20 and verse and verse 4 when it says that is in the air, in the heaven above or that is in the earth beneath. So verse, verse 19 is going to Exodus 20 verse 4 that is in the heaven above. So guess what? I'm going to show you something. You see this part when it says should us be driven to worship them? Hmm. Remember, we're reading Exodus 20. Now, in we, now we are reading Deuteronomy 4. Okay? Watch this. Now give me Deuteronomy chapter 5. Okay? Deuteronomy chapter 5. Read verse, read verse 7. I'm going to show you something. Deuteronomy 5 verse 7. Deuteronomy chapter 5 verse 7. Mm-hmm. Thou shalt have none other gods before me. Go ahead. Thou shalt not make thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or hey. that is in the earth beneath or mm -hmm. that is in the waters beneath the earth. Come on. Thou shalt not bow down thyself unto them nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. Next verse, come on. 
and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. So what is the Lord showing us? Remember in Exodus 20, he's already taught us, don't do that. Exodus Deuteronomy 4, he's, he's repeating it, he's repeating what we, we, were, we were taught in Exodus 20. Deuteronomy 5, he's repeating the same thing again. Watch what happens next. Remember, this is violation of which commandments, uh, Soldier John? Okay. It looks like the brothers and sisters are not paying attention. I'm going to kick people out of the class now. Give me one second. You fall asleep in class, you got to go. Okay. Uh, Soldier Samuel, are you still with us? Yes, sir. Okay, so which laws is he talking about that in Deuteronomy 4 that we just read? Which law, which law is he making reference to in Exodus 20? The second law, sir. Okay, so what about the first one? Both of them, sir. Okay, so you must mention both. Because if you are breaking the second law, it means the first one is broken by default. You yes, understand? sir. Okay, so now... We're in Deuteronomy 5. In Deuteronomy 5, he's repeating the same things again. But watch this. Now we're going to fast forward into the future because it says, lest thou shalt thou, lest shouldest be driven to worship them. Read that again. Deuteronomy 4 verse 19. Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 19. Go ahead. And lest thou lift up thine eyes unto heaven. And when thou seest the sun and the moon and the stars, mm -hmm. Wait. Even all the host of heaven should us be driven to worship them and should serve them. Should us be driven to worship them. Should us be driven to worship them. He is being specific about the things that are in the heaven above. He says, don't be driven to worship them. Go ahead. And serve them. Mm -hmm. Which the Lord thy God has divided unto all nations under the whole heaven. Now jump up to verse 16. I'm going to show you something. Read that. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 16. Lest ye corrupt yourselves and make you a graven image, the similitude of any figure, the now likeness what? of man, the similitude of any figure. He says the similitude of any figure, any figure, the similitude of any figure. Okay, come on. The likeness of male or female. So now watch this. Now I'm going to take you back now. Before we move on to the future, I'm going to take you back. Okay, remember, we went to Exodus 20 about the, the Ten Commandments, right? Which, which the whole Bible is sitting upon. Watch this. Now, give me the book of Numbers, okay? Give me Numbers 21. Numbers 21, verse 6. You know what? Read verse 4. Numbers 21, verse 4. Yes, sir. Numbers, chapter 21, verse 4. Go ahead. And they journeyed from Mount Hor by the way of the Red Sea Come on. to compass the land of Edom. And the soul of the people was much discouraged because of the way. So now our people started complaining. Our forefathers and foremothers, they started to murmur and to complain. Go ahead. And the people spake against God and mm. against Moses. Go ahead. Wherefore have you brought us out, out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no bread, neither is there any water, and our soul loathed this light bread. You see, they are even letting Moses say, listen, we hate the men, because that's the light bread he's talking about. We hate the men. Our soul loathed. They didn't say hate. They didn't say dislike. They say we loathe this, this light bread. So basically, they were, they, we was ungrateful. Go ahead. Verse 6. Come on. And the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people. The Lord sent fiery serpents among the people. Because what were we doing? We were murmuring and complaining. Go ahead. And they beat the people. Mm -hmm. And much people of Israel died. Now the Lord is bringing judgment on our, on our forefathers and foremothers. Right? Go ahead. Therefore, the people came to Moses and said, we have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord and against thee. Pray unto the Lord 
that he take away the serpents from us and Moses prayed for the people. So now, remember, it says the fiery serpents were biting our forefathers and foremothers in the wilderness. Okay? So now they realize, you know what? We are getting put to death out here. So now we need to what? We need to apologize to Moses for what we, for our, for our mouth, because they were running their mouth, right? And the Lord said unto Moses, make thee a fiery serpent and set it upon a pole. And it shall come to pass that everyone that is beaten, when he looketh upon it, shall live. So now read verse 8 again. I'm going to show you something here. Read verse 8 again. Numbers chapter 21 verse 8. And the Lord said unto Moses, make thee a fiery serpent and set it upon a pole. And it shall come to pass that everyone that is beaten, when he looketh upon it, shall live. So now the Lord is instructing Moses on what to do in order for the people to get healed. He says, take a take brass and make a fiery serpent and put it upon a pole, meaning it must be shaped like a snake and put it on a pole. Okay, go ahead. Remember, this is a likeness of a figure. What's going on? The Mosa is commanding Moses to make a likeness of a figure here. That's what's going on. Keep reading. And Moses made a serpent of brass and put it upon a pole. And it came to pass that if a serpent had bitten any man, when he beheld the serpent of brass, he lived. So now Moses, he made the serpent of brass and he put it upon a pole. And, then, and the Mosai commander said, listen, when the people um, look upon this serpent of brass, you understand? They believe upon, they believe that they are going to be healed. They are going to be healed. So what's happening here is what? The most High God is teaching them faith. So, but I'm going to show you where things go wrong. Because Moses made this serpent of brass. He didn't say worship it. The Lord, neither did the Lord commanded Moses to tell them to worship this serpent of brass. You understand? He just commanded Moses what to do. And he told what the people must do once the serpent of brass is lifted up. That's it. He didn't say don't worship it. No. He says when the people looketh upon it, you understand, anybody that has been beaten, he says put it upon the pole and it came to pass that if, that if the serpent had beaten any, when he beheld the serpent of brass, he lived. So when they looked upon it, they lived. So he was teaching them what? Faith. A faith. Hmm. Watch this. Remember, Numbers 21, Exodus 20. So Numbers is after Exodus, right? Now we are in Deuteronomy 4. The Lord is repeating to us again what we must and must not do. Deuteronomy 5 is repeating the same thing in Exodus 20. Watch this. Give me the book of 2 Kings 18 verse 1. 2 Kings chapter 18 verse 1. Go ahead. Now it came to pass in the third year of Hosea, son of Elah, king of Israel, that Hezekiah, the son of Ahaz, king of Judah, began to reign. So now when Elah was, was, was um, no, no, when Hosea, Hosea was ruling in Israel, northern kingdom, Hezekiah was ruling over Judah. Now watch this. This is during the time of Hezekiah's reign. Go ahead. Twenty and five years old was he when he began to reign. Mm -hmm. And he reigned twenty and nine years in Jerusalem. His mother's name also was Abby, the daughter of Zechariah. Right. And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, according to all that David his father did. So now Hezekiah was a righteous king. He did that which was right in the sight of the Lord. Watch what happens next. Go ahead. He removed the high places and break the images mm. and cut down the groves and break in pieces the brazen serpent that Moses had made. Stop right there. I want you to stop right there. Read the verse again, verse 4. Second Kings chapter 18, verse 4. Go ahead. He removed the high places and break the images and mm -hmm. cut down the groves and break in pieces the brazen serpent that Moses had made. So, which means that, remember now, now, now let's think. Now, remember, I mean, hmm, hmm. watch this. Let me show you. Give me the book of First Kings, right? 
Give me First Kings chapter six. First Kings six and one. I'm gonna show you something. Because what you need to understand is the mindset of our people. And now, remember, remember, we're dealing with the Ten Commandments. Don't get it twisted. Okay? I just use a different route. Watch this. Now, First Kings 6 and 1. I'm going to show you something. here. First Kings chapter 6, verse 1. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass in the 418th year after the children of Israel were come out of the land of Egypt. In the fourth year of Solomon's reign over Israel, in the month Ziph, which is the second month, that he began to build the house of the Lord. So now this is 480 years after we came out of Egypt. 480 years. And this is in the fourth year of Solomon's reign. It says out of the land of Egypt in the fourth year of Solomon's reign. So now think about it, right? 480 years, this is close to 500 years, we left Egypt. Now, this Solomon at this time is building the temple, right? So now, Hezekiah is way after Solomon. You understand? Hezekiah is way after Solomon. So, which means that in the wilderness, 40 years in the wilderness. Then from the time of the wilderness, after 40 years, we are now we conquest into the into what into the land. Now we need to conquer the Canaanites and so forth and the Joshua. Now years go by. Then comes the time of the judges and so forth. You understand? Ruth, whatever, whatever. Now it's been hundreds of years, close to 500 years now. Now Solomon is building the temple. Years later, Hezekiah is the king. So Moses has been gone for years. You see that thing? Hmm. Hmm. Remember, Solomon is building the temple in his fourth year, in the fourth year of his reign. So that means 36 years will go by. Remember, 36 years will go by. Okay? 36 years will go by. Solomon will rule for, eight, for 40 years. So now, imagine now, you've got, after Solomon, the kingdom split. You've got Rehoboam, you've got Jeroboam. Years go by. Generations later, Hezekiah comes into the picture. So Moses is dead and gone. This is more than 500 years now. Hmm. Go back to 2 Kings chapter 18. I just want to paint a picture so you really understand what's going on. 2 Kings 18, read verse 4 again. Okay, watch this. 2 Kings chapter 18, verse 4. Go ahead. He removed the high places and break the images and cut down mm -hmm. the groves and break in pieces the brazen serpent that Moses had made. Stop right there. So you tell him that means that they kept that brazen serpent for that law. They kept the brazen serpent for that law. You understand? We kept it. Up to the time of Hezekiah, we had that thing. That's why he says, um, we had the brazen. He says, what? When Hezekiah took the throne, what did he do? He started to do a cleanup. There was, he says, what? He removed the high places because we were worshiping idols and so forth and break the images because we made graven images that we worshiped. Then he says, and cut down the groves. We made groves, meaning wood, you know, say, you understand? You know, these idols that are carved out of wood and so forth. It says, and breaking pieces, the brazen serpent that Moses made. So they didn't make a new one. They kept that one for that long. Hmm. This is hundreds of years, 600 years plus. We kept this thing. And Zechariah, when he took the throne, he had to destroy it. But remember, Exodus 20, he said, listen, thou shalt not. Okay. Deuteronomy 4. Thou shalt not. The 25, thou shalt not. You see that? In Numbers, he never said worship this thing. But look at how many years later, Israel, we still kept this thing. And guess what we was doing? We was worshiping it. Do you see this? Oh, praise. Yes, sir. I need you brothers to understand what's going on. That's why 
the couple of days back, I was dealing with the 10, particularly, you know, the laws that pertain to the father, the laws that pertain to your brethren. I want to show you something, right? Hmm. Hezekiah did a cleanup. Watch this. Give me the book of 2 Chronicles 33. Get 2 Chronicles 33, right? Second, no, get 2 Chronicles chapter 30, 32. Read verse 33. 2 Chronicles chapter 32, verse 33. Come on. And Hezekiah slept with his fathers, and they really? buried him in the chiefest of the sepulchres of the sons of David. Mm. And all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem did him honor at his death. And Manasseh, really? his son, reigned in his stead. Now it's time for Manasseh to take the throne after his father Hezekiah died. Read chapter 33, verse 1 now. Watch this. Second Chronicles, chapter 33, verse 1. Manasseh was 12 years old when he began to reign. And mm -hmm. he reigned 50 and 5 years in Jerusalem. So he was ruling for 55 years. He took the throne when he was 12. Go ahead. But did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord, mm -hmm. like unto the abominations of the heathen, whom the Lord, had cast out before the children of Israel. That's talking about, what, what, what is this talking about? It's talking about the Canaanites because the Lord kicked them out because what were they doing? They were worshiping idols. We had to kick them out the land and clean up. Go ahead. For he built again the high places which Hezekiah, his father, had broken down. Come on. And he reared up altars for Balaam and made groves and worshiped all the host of heaven and serve them. So which law did he break here? He says, he built the high places which Hezekiah, his father, had broken down in 2 Kings 18. And he ran up altars for ba Baalim, which is Baal, the devil, and made groves and worship all the host of heaven and serve them. Brother, Brother Tabu, which law did he break here? Give me the chapter and verse. Uh, shalom, sir. Shalom. Uh, I would say he broke both the first and the second commandment, sir. Okay, why do you say that? Uh, because, uh, sir, the, the first commandment says, uh, thou shalt not have uh, any other gods before me, which is in Exodus 20, verse 3. Mm -hmm. And then he had uh, Behal as his God on, on this chapter here, ba Balim as his God. And he also made groves uh, and he it was worshiping, worshiping the host of heaven and that's breaking the second commandment sir okay okay all praises to the most high. so now keep going second chronicles 33 verse 4 second chronicles 33 verse 4 right also he built altars in the house of the lord whereof the lord had said in jerusalem shall my name be forever. You see what he's saying? In Jerusalem shall my name be forever. So he decided he's going to build these altars for these idols that he worships in the house of the Lord. Go ahead. And he built altars for all the hosts of heaven in the two courts of the house of the Lord. He says altars for all the hosts of heaven, meaning sun, moon, and stars, astrology, and so forth. Go ahead. And he caused his children to pass through the fire in the valley of the of the son of Hinnon. Stop right also, there. So what did he do? He caused his children to pass through the fire mm -hmm. in the valley of the son of Hinnom. Now I want to show you the transition here. You see, there's the transition going on here. Okay. Um, read verse 6 again. Then I'm going to ask a question. Second Chronicles chapter 33 verse 6. Mm -hmm. And he caused his children to pass through the fire in the valley of the son of Hinnom. Stop right there. He says he caused his children to pass through the fire in the valley of the son of Hinnom. So which law did he break here? Brother Tabo. He says he caused his children to pass through the fire. Shalom, sir. Shalom. Uh, sir, I would imagine when the children pass through the fire that probably... 
it was sacrificing them and they died. So I would say, thou shall not kill, sir. Thou shall not kill. Okay, yes, what commandment is that? Uh, so that's the sixth commandment, sir. That's the what? That's the sixth commandment, sir. Let's prove that. Let's get that. Exodus 20, verse 13. Exodus chapter 20, verse 13. Go ahead. Thou shalt not kill. So now, this law pertains to, to, to the neighbor, to his neighbor, right? Yes, sir. Okay, so he broke the law that says thou shalt not kill. So now, remember, he broke the laws he broke the he broke the first and second commandment. You understand? He even broke the third. You understand? He broke the third. Thou shalt not take the name of the light thy God in vain. Exodus twenty verse seven. But what you are noticing here in Exodus, I mean Second Chronicles thirty three, is as he caused his children to pass through the fire. So guess what? The pass through the fire is means sacrificing children, right? And when they sacrifice children. Watch this. Give me the book of Leviticus, okay? Um, get ex uh, Leviticus 20. Read Leviticus chapter 20 and verse 4. Leviticus chapter 20 verse 4. And if the people of the land do any ways hide their eyes from the man, when he giveth of his seed unto Molech and kill him you know not. What? Jump up. Start of this one. I'm going to show you something here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to connect what we just read in 2 Chronicles 33 regarding he caused his children to pass through the fire. I'm going to show you what was going on. Leviticus 20 verse 1. Read that. Leviticus chapter 20 verse 1. Mm -hmm. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Read. Again, thou shalt say to the children of Israel, whosoever he be of the children of Israel, or of the strangers that sojourn in Israel, that giveth any of his seed unto Molech, and he Molech. shall show thee. So Molech, Molech was a was a, was a Canaanite idol. Molech was a Canaanite idol that they used to sacrifice their sons and their daughters to. Right? That giveth any of his seed unto Molech, he shall surely be put to death. Come on. The people of the land shall stone him with stones. Meaning what? Israel shall judge him like that. The Lord is going to judge him by using the, the, the community, the 12 tribes of Israel to stone him. Because why? That's idolatry. You understand? Secretly, he causes his sons and daughters to pass through the fire to sacrifice them unto Molech. Okay, go ahead. And I will set my face against that man and will Ray? cut him off from among his people. Ray, meaning because he death. had Ray? Because he has given of his seed unto Molech to defile my sanctuary and to profane my holy name. Because now he is sacrificing the sons unto this idol. So he's no longer worshipping the Mosai. He's worshipping this idol and he's sacrificing unto it. You understand? Go ahead. And if the people of the land do anyways hide their eyes from the men. They don't, ex they don't expose it. They don't talk about it. They don't say nothing. Read. Really? When he giveth of his seed unto Molech and kill him not. And they don't kill him, right? Then I will set my face against that man and against his family and will cut him off and all that go a whoring after him to commit whoredom with Molech from among their people. Now I want to show that, that part right there. Is it read verse 5 again? Leviticus 20? Leviticus chapter 20 verse 5. Come on. Then I will set my face against that man and against his family and will cut him off and all that go a whoring after him to commit whoredom with Molech from among their people. You see what he's saying? So I, I want to ask a question right here. So Brother Tavo, you up. I want to ask you a question. I need you to pay attention. What we read in Leviticus 20, right, goes into sacrificing uh, Manasseh was sacrificing his sons and daughters to Molech, right? Yes, sir. In verse 5 of Exodus 20, what just happened? Because we were reading about sacrificing their sons and daughters to Molech, which is what? 
abortions. They commit abortions, you understand? And they sacrifice their sons and daughters unto Molech. They literally make their sons and daughters pass through the fire, meaning they, they give birth to a child and they sacrifice that child to Molech by setting the child on fire and killing it. That's what our forefathers and foremothers was doing. So, but I want to, I want you to see what's going on here in verse 5. Read Leviticus 20 verse 5, then I'm going to ask a question. Leviticus chapter 20 verse 5. Mm -hmm. Then I will set my face against that man and against his family and will mm -hmm. cut him off and all that go a whoring after him to commit whoredom with Molech from among their people. What just happened? Mm -hmm. Read the verse again for him slow. Leviticus chapter 20 verse 5. Then I will set my face against that man and mm -hmm. against his family. Go ahead. And will cut him off and all that go a whoring after him to commit God with Molech from among their people. What just happened? Shalom, sir. Shalom. Uh, I'm not sure, sir, but I'm going to try. Okay, let's go. Let me hear it. Uh, from what I understand here, sir, is he also influenced other people to do the same. Okay, when we get that. All that and, and what else? Say. What else? So what's the scene here? Yes, he influenced other people to do the same, but let's get down to the details of the scene that just took place here in verse 5. Yes, sir. The, the word I'm saying is the sin that's been committed. Okay. Here. So where would you go yeah. to prove what what is hordom? I believe hordom can also go into going after worshiping other gods, sir. Or yeah, that's one of that's spiritual fornication. Spiritual fornication, yes, but in the context of what we're reading here, in terms of the children being sacrificed to Molech. Then it says hoarder. Yes, sir. I would say uh, he's committing adultery. They were committing adultery as well. Correct. So adultery was being committed. So what is the gateway to adultery? Watch this. Now go back to Second Chronicles 33. Second Chronicles 33, read verse 3. Second Chronicles, chapter 33, verse 3. Go ahead. For he built again the high place which Hezekiah, his father, had broken down. And he reared mm -hmm. up altars for Balaam and made groves and worshipped all the hosts of heaven and served them. Now, what this, this, this verse right here, what law did he break? He broke the first and the second law, sir. Even the third. Okay, now, okay, now read verse six. Second Chronicles chapter 33, verse six. Yeah. And he caused his children to pass through the fire in the valley of the son of him, Hinnom. Stop right there. So what just happened? What law did he break here? Yeah, uh, he, he uh, thou shalt not kill, sir. The sixth commandment. Thou shalt not kill. Yeah, and what else? What else? What law? What else law did he break? Now keep in mind also, what we read in Leviticus. Keep in mind what we read in Leviticus 20, verse 5. I, I Remember, believe don't forget, also what, said. Don't forget, yes, okay. Listen now. Don't forget what we read in Leviticus 20, verse 5, right? So what we're reading here, I want I want you to see. I'm, I'm trying to, I'm helping you to connect the dots. Okay, so in Second Chronicles 33, verse 6, you say he committed um, the law that he broke the law that says thou shalt not kill, which is correct. Okay, but what law and what else did what law did he break in the 10? So, in yes, sir. So, in order for to cause the children to pass through the fire, I would imagine that uh, adultery was being committed as well. Which means what? They were, they were it also... Because I agree you are saying yeah. adultery was being committed. So where do the children come from? 
So they were he was sleeping around with women, sir. Correct. So he was committing adultery. You understand? So the gate, what is the now the question again? What is the gateway to adultery? But uh, breaking. Uh. Think, think, just take your time. What is the gateway to adult? What is the gateway to adult? The gateway to adult. We just read it, okay, in Second Chronicles 33, verse 3. So I would say saving other gods. Sir. Yes. Going after idols. So, correct. So I, I, idolatry is the gateway to adult. Make sense? All praises, sir. All praises, sir. So now, watch this. I'm going to prove what I'm saying. Because what we read, we read in Second Chronicles, there was a shift. One minute, he's worshipping other gods. He's breaking the first, second, and third commandment. Then before you know it, he's sacrificing his children. He's breaking the law that says, thou shalt not kill. Right? Then, not only that, he is committing adultery. You understand? Because in Exodus, in Leviticus 20, is the, the Mosa is letting us know that he was sacrificing his sons and his daughters to Molech, and he was committing whoredom with Molech. Spiritual fornication and physical fornication. You see that thing? So now, watch this. Give me, give me the book. Give me Wisdom of Solomon real quick. Wisdom of Solomon? No. Yeah, Wisdom of Solomon. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 14. Wisdom of Solomon 14 and verse 11. Watch this. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 14 verse 11. Go ahead. Therefore, even upon the idols of the Gentiles shall there be a visitation. Right. Because in the creature of God, they are become an abomination. And stumbling they are blocks. becoming what? They are becoming abomination. So now it says the, the idols of the Gentiles, you understand? It says they are becoming an abomination in the creature of God. They are an abomination. These idols that our people are worshipping, they are abomination unto the Lord our God. Go ahead. And stumbling blocks to the souls of men. Read. And a snare to the feet of the unwise. And, and a snare to the feet of the unwise. It says, as and stumbling blocks to the souls of men, their minds, and a snare to the feet of the unwise. Watch this, because the unwise don't know right from wrong. Read on. For the devising of idols was the beginning of spiritual fornication, uh -huh. and the invention of them, the corruption of life. So the invent, the devising of these idols was the beginning of spiritual fornication, like what Manessas was doing, is the invention of them, meaning them the, to grave to put to create graven images and to bow down and worship them is the corruption of life. Now jump down to verse, read verse uh, fourteen. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter fourteen, verse fourteen. Mm -hmm. For by the vain glory of men they are entered into the world. And therefore, shall they come shortly to an end? So now it says, these idols is to glory is by the vain glory of men, men wanting to be worshipped as gods on earth. Now read verse sixteen. Watch this. Read verse fifteen. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter fourteen, verse fifteen. Go ahead. For a father afflicted with untimely mourning. When he has made an image of his child, soon taken away. Mm -hmm. Now honored him as a God, which was then a dead man and delivered to those that were under him ceremonies and sacrifices. You see what happened? Now they started some, they started traditions and philosophies. A father loses his son. It says, now the father makes an image of his son that was taken away soon. Now the people... Now they what he made that his son that was dead to be to be honored as a god after his death. Then he says, which was then a dead man, and they delivered to those that were under him ceremonies and sacrifices. 
Because this father had to have some kind of what authority or some kind of a status. You understand? You know, these noble men and whatnot. So now his son passes away like a president. His son passes away. And then now he's dead. They are now making an, a molten a graven images of it or a bust. Now people start to worship them. They deliver ceremonies and sacrifices. You understand? No, we are celebrating the anniversary of, um, of, of, of such and such. Now they're having parties and celebrations and so forth. No, we are celebrating his life. But in actual fact, they are honoring him as a god. You see that thing? Yes, sir. Now, an, an example. Watch this. Read verse 16. Go ahead. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 14, verse 16. Read. Really? Thus, in process of time, an ungodly custom grown strong was kept as a law. Mm -hmm. And graven images were worshipped by the commandments of kings. You see what it says? In process of time, meaning over time, this custom in verse 15 it, it, were, it was kept as a law. Remember, we're dealing with the what? The first, second, and third commandment here. Okay, go ahead. It says, now it was kept as a law. And graven images were worshipped by the commandment of kings. So verse 15 is letting you know that that father that lost, he lost his son soon, early, you understand? What happened? He started a custom, a demonic abominable custom that his son that was dead, now was worshipped as a god. So over time, the kings, they gave a decree to do that. You see that? Read on. Yes, sir. Who men could not honor in presence because they dwelt far off. They took the counterfeit of his visage from far and mm -hmm. made an express image of a king whom they honored. You to see the that? end, they made, he says they made an express image of a king whom they honored. So they made a counterfeit carbon copy of the graven image of what? Of the king or the king's son. Okay, go ahead. To the end that by this, their forwardness, they might flatter him that was absent as if he were present. You see that? So they would flatter him with gifts and presents and ceremonies as if he was present. Okay, go ahead. Also, the singular diligence of the artificer did help to set forward the ignorant to more superstition. Meaning what? The artificer is the artist, the artist that would paint the images of kings to be worshipped or the sons of the kings to be worshipped. A classic example today that happened in the 1400s is what? Is Pope Alexander. Pope Alexander the Sixth of Rome. You understand? The artificer, Leonardo da Vinci, who painted the Pope's son as the new image of Jesus Christ in these last days. You understand? So, but the Pope's son was still alive. He wasn't dead. He was still alive. So the Pope, you understand, he commissioned Leonardo da Vinci to come and paint the image of his son, you understand, to be worshipped as a god. And the Pope was worshipped as a god. Remember what we just read here in verse 17. Read verse 17 again. I'm going to show you. Because when you read the history of Pope Alexander VI of Rome, Caesar Borgia, Rodrigo Borgia, watch this. Um, Wisdom of Solomon 14, verse 17. Read that again. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 14, verse 17. Go ahead. Whom men could not honor in presence, because they dwelt far off, they uh -huh. took the counterfeit of his visage from far and made an express image of a king whom they honored. You see to that? the end. They, hold on. They made an express image of a king whom they honored. So in the 1400s, guess what that king was that whom they honored? Was Rodrigo Borgia, the father of Caesar Borgia. So now... What happened was the Pope was honored as a what? As a God. So now when he had his son to be painted as a God, he became the son of God. You see that? He became the son of God. So that's why today you see Caesar Borgia as they, they stole the life of Christ. Now they say he's the son of God. 
but that's where it comes from. So this is idolatry, right? Because they commission artists to come and paint the image. Read verse 18 now, come on. Also, the singular diligence of the artificer did help to set forward the ignorant to more superstition. So the artificers, that's the, 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 the artists that would be commissioned by these kings to paint themselves and the sons that they had. Now watch this. We dealt with that. Now read verse 24. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 14, verse 24. Go ahead. They kept neither life nor marriage you know any longer. Start, start, of, start of verse 23. Watch this. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 14, verse 23. Go ahead. For once they slew their children in sacrifices uh -huh. or used secret ceremonies or made revelings of strange rites. That goes into what? Party. You understand? That goes into bashes and, 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 and clubs going to bottle stores and uh, whatever, nightclubs and all that. It goes into that. It's all part of that. It's all part of idolatry. But it says, for whilst they, sh they slew their children in sacrifices. That's what Manasseh did. You understand? That's what Manasseh did. He was sacrificing his sons and his daughters. It says, it says, oh, you secret ceremonies. Secret ceremonies regarding what? Regarding sacrificing their sons and daughters to Molech. You understand? Or made revelings of strange rites. Because now, think about it now. Now I need you men to think, okay? So what's happening here is they killing their sons and daughters that they are having, you understand, through adultery and horror. Then they sacrifice them to Molech. So today, what is, the, what, what, is our, what is the black woman doing? Killing our sons and daughters. They are committing abortions. So the reason why abortion is taking place is because of what? adultery which is caused by idolatry you see that yes sir so now watch the next verse read verse 24 wisdom of solomon chapter 14 verse 24 go ahead they kept neither life nor marriages any longer undefiled so the marriages were no longer undefiled wait the meaning the marriages were defiled they were breaking the laws of marriage go ahead but either one slew another treacherous. They were killing one another. Go ahead. Or grieved him by adultery. Or did what? Or grieved him by adultery. Or grieved him by adultery. So idolatry is the gateway to what? To adultery. To murder. You see that? So now, let's think about this right here. Now, Brother Tavo, I'm asking you now again. So what's happening is we, we, we just discovered that, okay, idolatry, which is Exodus 20. Then now we have, I, we have adult. Now we have murder. Do, do, you see that, right? So now let me ask a question. Now, what is these strange ceremonies, right, that we read, the secret ceremonies and so forth, the revelings of strange rites, so today, let's give an example of, let's give an example of birthdays. How can celebrating your birthday cause you to commit adultery? Shalom, sir. Can sir hear me? Hello. Yes, I can hear you. Uh, as sir have said, uh, as we have understood from what came out, that idolatry is the gateway to adultery. When we uh, celebrating birthdays, whoever's birthday it is that they are being celebrated, that will be at that moment will be regarded as an idol. Okay. And and thereafter, uh, when we celebrate these birthdays, there's gonna be ceremonies and parties to celebrate this day, and then on this on these parties, there's gonna be alcohol and all of that, and then that will lead to adultery. Exactly. So, so that, that's usually what happens. That's usually the formula for adultery. So idolatry, they're celebrating themselves because they worship themselves as a god. Then, obviously, it says, uh, read verse 23 again, Wisdom of Solomon 14, verse 23. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 14, verse 23. 
Go ahead. For whilst they slew their children in sacrifices, or used secret ceremonies, or made revelings of strange rites. So now it, this goes into what obviously abortions and so forth, ceremonies that goes into the ceremonies that goes into these abortions that they make. Because today our our people they commit abortions, they go back to the club. They commit abortion. I'm not ready to be a mother. I still want to live my life. That type of it. That's the thought process. Meaning what? I still want to go out. I still want to. I still want to party. I'm, I still want to. You understand? I still want to enjoy my freedom. The child is gonna hold me back. I guess that's what the black woman says. So now, read the next verse, verse twenty-four. Watch this. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter fourteen, verse twenty-four. They kept neither lives nor marriages any longer undefiled. Go ahead. But either one slew another traitorously and grieved him by adultery. You see that thing? Or oh, grieved him by adultery. Because during these parties, the birthday parties, you find that the, the sister is, is, is celebrating a birthday. The boyfriend is not there, which is usually sometimes it happens. The boyfriend is not there. But the friend of the, of the girlfriend is there supporting her. Then guess what happens? She ends up sleeping with the friend because the boyfriend is not there. Then what happens? She falls pregnant. She's too excited. No, don't use a condom. We're not going to fall pregnant. I get they are drunk now. They are partying. The music is loud and so forth. You, you see that thing? It's basically, it's a formula of evil. Now I'm going to show you something. Jump down to verse 26 now. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 14, verse 26. Go ahead. Disquieting of good men, mm -hmm. forgetfulness of good turns, Go defiling ahead. of souls, Read. changing of kind, mm. disorder in marriages, adultery, and shameless uncleanness. It says changing of kind. That goes into what? Um, changing your sex. Saying, no, I'm a man, but I don't, I don't feel like a man on the inside. I'm really a woman. Or I don't, I'm not, I don't feel like I'm not really a woman, but I feel like a man on the inside. So Esau will, you know, they will do that sex change surgery. Like you see that that man that turned himself into a so-called woman. Uh, what's his name? Caitlin Jenner, is it? Bruce yes, Jenner. Yes, Bruce is it Bruce Jenner? That's Bruce Jenner, right? I just know he's a That's Jenner, Bruce sir. Jenner, right? <laughs> That's Sir. Bruce Jenner, right? Now he changed his name to what? To Caitlin, is it? Yes, sir. Yes, yeah, sir. So, so what we're reading here, what we're reading here, brothers and sisters, I'm showing you is it's give me that in uh in um give me that give me the book of Revelation real quick. Give me Revelation. Um Revelation 2. Revelation 2, verse 24. Watch this. Revelation chapter 2, verse 24. But unto you I say, and unto the rest in Thyatira, as many as have not this doctrine, and which have not known the depths of Satan, as they speak, I will put upon you none other burden. He says, which have not known the depths of Satan, because Satan has levels. There's levels to Satan. So here, I'm going to show you the levels. We dealt with idolatry, we dealt with adultery, we dealt with murder. Now I'm going to show you something. Read that part again. Wisdom of Solomon 14, 26. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 14, verse 26. Go Disquieting ahead. of good men, forgetfulness of good turns, mm. defining of souls, changing of kind, disorder in marriages, adultery, and shameless uh -huh. uncleanness. So it says... Forgetfulness of good turns, defiling of souls, changing of kind. That's the sex change surgeries that they perform. Disorder in marriages. Now the marriages, remember in verse 24 says, they kept neither lives nor marriages any longer undefiled. That's why he says disorder in marriages, adultery and shameless uncleanness. Now, now, Remember what we read in, in, in Revelation. It says, the depths of Satan. I'm going to show you something here. Give me the book of Romans. Okay, give me Romans 1. Romans chapter 1. Okay. 
Romans 1, read verse 25. I'm going to show you something. Watch this. Romans chapter 1, verse 25. Come on. Who changed the truth of God into a lie and mm. worship and serve the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. So the, the creator is blessed forever. Okay. But he says, who changed the truth of God into a lie? What is the truth of God? Um, Brother Tom, what is the truth of God? The laws of God, sir. Okay, where would you go to prove that? Mm. I would go okay, to... Sorry. Yes, you have the answer? I think it's uh, this book of Psalms. Yeah. Chapter 119 verse 140... 147. 147. Mm. No, sir. No, sir. Apologies. Okay, try again. We, you are in the same. The, the chapter is correct. 142, sir. Yes, let's get there. Psalms 119, verse 142. Psalms chapter 119, verse 142. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and thy law is the truth. And thy law is the truth. So let's go back. Romans chapter 1, verse 25 again. Romans chapter 1, verse 25. Go ahead. Who changed the truth of God into a lie? And who changed the truth of God? Who changed, who changed the laws of God into a lie? That's really what the Apostle Paul is asking. Who changed the law of God into a lie? Go ahead. And worshipped and served the creature more than the creator. Who is they blessed forever. He says, worshiping the creature, meaning the creation more than the creator. Okay? So now, who did that? Who changed the truth of God into a lie? Because they cannot change the truth of God, really. But the way in which they're going to teach the truth of God, they're going to what? They're going to teach it with lies. That's what the, that's what the Apostle Paul is teaching us. They're going to pervert the gospel of Christ how they're going to teach the truth of god they're going to teach the truth of they're going to teach the truth of god by perverting the truth of god you understand read on verse 26 come on for this cause god gave them up unto vile affections okay come on for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature isn't that what we just read in wisdom of solomon is a changing of kind disorder in marriages so because of idolatry women is as women are going to change the natural use into their natural use into that which is against nature women are going to want to act like men they're going to dress like men you see that thing so that's part of what idolatry which is covetousness you understand which is adult the list goes on and on read on and likewise, also the men, mm. leaving the natural use of the woman, burn in their lust one toward another. Men with men, working that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error, which was meet. So now what's happening here is, what's going on here? The woman is changing a natural use into that which is against nature. So that goes into the dress code, that goes into her spirit will change, will, she'll have a manly spirit, she'll dress like men, you understand? So the man will leave the natural use of the woman, he will no longer deal with women, he'll deal with men. So what law, what law are they breaking here? Brother Tabo, you up. What law has been broken? Thou shalt not commit adultery, sir. So why do you say that? Because a uh, man sleeping with men, even if they say the world, God does not, they committing adultery. Okay, uh, you in the matrix there. Say that again. Shalom, sir. Can you say hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. Go ahead. Uh, I would explain it like this. I would say 
because when men sleep with men, even if they say they are married into the world, God does not recognize that made out. So God does not recognize what? Gay marriage. So why? What law in the 10 does it violate? Because you was right. You said something correct earlier on. Which law are they breaking in the 10? Thou shall not commit adultery, sir. Thou shall not commit adultery. Because what law should they honor? What, what man, a man, what law should, what, which law tells a man who he must marry? Mm. Can, uh, okay. okay. Let me ask it like this. What law that was given from the beginning regarding marriage? Yes, sir. The law was a man shall leave his mother and father and become one with his wife. Okay. So, so which means, which law are they violating? Yes, they are committing adultery. Okay. But which law are they violating also? Uh, I would say one of the father and the mother. Sir. Yes, that's also true. Because how did they come into the world? Because of father and mother, right? Which is true. Yes, sir. So, but which law are they? Which law? Which law are they breaking? Also, yes, they are committing adultery, which is they are breaking the seventh commandment. They are also breaking the fifth commandment. Okay, they are also breaking the tenth commandment. As an example. My question to you is, which law, are, which law are they violating also with that? Is the law of what? Marriage. Marriage, sir. You understand? Yes, sir. They are violating the laws of marriage. Get that in Hebrews 13, verse 4. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 4. Go ahead. Marriage is honorable in all. And the paid and defiled, but whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. So now, because of covetousness, now a man wants to deal with another man. A woman wants to deal with another woman. So now they were committing adultery. You remember, they committed idolatry. They committed adultery and murder. Not only that, now it's escalating in terms of adultery. Now they are committing what? They are having homosexual relations now. That's the depths of Satan. So what, what we are bringing out, are these facts or opinions? Facts, sir. They are facts, right? Yes, sir. Okay, let's get Isaiah 1 verse 9 real quick. Isaiah 1 verse 9. Isaiah chapter 1 verse 9. Except the Lord of hosts had left unto us a very small remnant, we should have been as Sodom, and we should have been like unto Gomorrah. You see what the Lord is saying? What is this verse saying? Uh, Soldier Samuel, what is this verse saying to us? What is the Lord saying here to us? Yes, sir. Shalom, sir. Shalom. Yes, sir. Um, I believe the verse is saying we should have been destroyed the same way Sodom and Gomorrah were destroyed because of the, the wickedness and same-sex marriages that uh, is going on, sir. Okay, read the verse again. I want you to pay attention to the verse. Read the verse again. Isaiah chapter 1, verse 9. Except the Lord of hosts had left unto us a very small remnant, we should have been as Sodom and we should have been like unto Gomorrah. So what was the main, one of the main sins of Sodom? What was it? And Gomorrah. Homosexuality, sir. So what is the verse saying? Uh, read the verse again for soldier Samuel. Isaiah chapter 1 verse 9. Except the Lord of hosts had left unto us a very small remnant. We should have been as Sodom. And we should have been like unto Gomorrah. So now, now that we've established that 
the sins of Sodom and of Gomorrah, the main one of the main sins was homosexuality was rampant in Sodom and Gomorrah. Okay, so now what is the Lord saying here with this verse? Shalom, sir. Shalom. Um, I'm not sure, sir, but I, I would think that the Lord is saying that um, the Lord will keep a few of us um, the same way uh, maybe the Lord kept Lot uh, when, when the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. No, no, you're not paying attention. Read the verse again, read it slow for him. Isaiah chapter 1 verse 9. Except the Lord of hosts had left unto us a very small remnant. Explain this part right here. When he says, except the Lord of hosts has left unto us a very small remnant. What is Isaiah saying the Lord has done for us? I believe the Lord... Isaiah is saying the Lord left a few of us who would not be corrupted by the sins of the world, sir. Okay, no, 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 no. Just, just, just don't add. Do you remember in Deuteronomy 4, verse 2 says, don't add, you are adding. Read the verse again. I want you to pay attention. Isaiah chapter 1, verse 9. Except the Lord of hosts had left unto us a very small remnant. Stop right there. It says, except the Lord of hosts had left unto us a very small remnant. Just explain that part. But a few of us will be left, sir, after okay. the Lord. Wait. The few of us would be left. So the Lord will leave a remnant on this earth. Now yes, in the next part of that verse. Go ahead. We should have been a sword of... Mm -hmm. And we should have been like unto Gomorrah. Now re-explain that last part of that verse. So I would, I think it would mean that the rest of us who won't be saved among the remnants will be destroyed. No, no, you're not paying attention. It says we should have been as Sodom and we should have been like unto Gomorrah. Remember, the remnant is left on the earth. Yes, the sir. remnant, if they will be doing what the Lord says. If the Lord had not left us a remnant to keep the commandments of the Most High God, how were we going to be, all of us? What is the Lord saying? We would all be destroyed, sir. No, no, no. Before the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah, what was going on in Sodom and Gomorrah? Oh, sir, we would all be partakers of, of homosexuality, sir. That's what he's saying right there. Don't if it's not me. for us going to the streets and teaching, guess what? Because we, we make part of the remnant all over the earth teaching the gospel. If it wasn't for that, it says we should have all been like Sodom and Gomorrah. Hmm. No praise, sir. Do you brothers and sisters understand that? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All praises to the Most High. All praises. So now, the reason why I'm bringing this out, I'm trying to show you when, go back to Exodus now. Go back to Exodus. Get Exodus 20. Okay. Exodus chapter 20. Read verse 2 again. Read verse 3. Verse 3. Exodus chapter 20 verse 3. Go ahead. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. So, breaking that law, immediately you will break the second one as well. Read on. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. Stop right there. Oh. Now read verse 3 again. Hold on. Read verse 3. I'm going to ask a question. Exodus chapter 20 verse 3. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Stop right there. He says, thou shalt have no other gods before me. So now, if you have another god, that means the most high god is out of the picture, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, so what happens next? What's the next step? Adultery, sir. No, 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 no. Before we get there, right here in verse 4, 
Because now he says, thou shalt have no other gods before me. What happened? What's, what's the next step? Explain to me the next step. What happens next? Yes, sir. What happens next is worshipping graven images, sir. Why? Because the Lord is no longer, because you're no longer worshipping God. So now, what's the graven image for? I mean, let's think. I mean, if, if you're worshipping the Lord, you no longer worship the Lord. I agree you are worshipping the Lord. You're keeping his commandments, correct? Yes, sir. And there was no similitude that was given to us to worship, right? Yes, sir. So why would there be a need for engraving images to be made? What's the, what's the reason why this is made here? Why would we now fall into making graven images? What's the motive behind this? Yes, sir. I believe it's because we don't want to follow the laws, sir. Hmm. No, you missed it. Um, Soldier Bezalel, let me hear you. Shalom, sir. Shalom. Yes, sir. Uh, can sir please repeat the question? Oh, so you were sleeping. What the hell is this? Okay, just hold that. Uh, Brother Hegai, let me hear you. Stay awake. Okay, Brother Hegai. I think the motive would be because of idolatry, sir. Hold on. We've already established that idolatry is taking place. Because the first commandment says, read the verse again, Exodus 20, verse 3. Exodus chapter 20, verse 3. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. We've established that. The Lord says, don't have no other gods. Now, the Negroes decide, okay, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to have another god before me. Why the graven image, though? Why make this graven image to worship it? Yes, I can hear you. Yes, sir. I'd say um, it would be because of covetousness. Hmm. Okay, so they're basically here. Why the graven image, though? Because we've established that idolatry is committed because now a graven image is made. Once you make a graven image to bow down to it, by default, you have another God before you. So why this graven image to worship it? Shalom, sir. Shalom. Sir. I'm listening. Can you say, yes, I can hear you. Go ahead. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. To despise the most high God, sir. Hmm. Brothers, you're not thinking. I need you brothers to think. Um, okay, Soldier Nehemiah, let me hear you. Sir, uh, sir, I, I also think that you you covet whatever that you turn into your God. So it's covetousness. Okay, so you brothers are not thinking. Remember, verse 3 says, thou shalt have no other gods, right? Verse yes, 4, don't make any graven images to, to bow down to them in verse 5. Still saying they're explaining the same thing in verse 4 and 5. So I need you brothers to think, right? Hmm. I'll, I'll, I'll give you a clue of this. Then you'll explain it to me. Give me the book of Deuteronomy 32. Okay. Get Deuteronomy chapter 32 and verse 16. Deuteronomy chapter 32 verse 16. Go ahead. They provoked him to jealousy with strange gods. With mm. abominations provoked they him to anger. Go ahead. They sacrificed unto devils, not to God. Read. To gods whom they knew not, to new gods that came newly up, whom your fathers feared not. Jump down to verse 20. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 20. And mm -hmm. he said, I will hide my face from them. I will see what their end shall be. For they are a very forward generation, children in whom is no faith. Now, Soldier Bezalel, you're up. Why the need to make a graven image? To bow down to it? Yes, sir. Uh, I think so it's to, uh, to aggravate the most I quote, to make him even more angry. 
Okay, we've already established that in verse 16 and 17. The clue is verse 20. Read verse 20 again. Then uh, you're gonna have, then I'm gonna answer, uh, then I need you to answer the question again. Read verse 20 again. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 20. And he mm -hmm. said, I will hide my face from them. Go ahead. I will see what their end shall be. Mm. For they are a very forward generation, children in whom is no faith. Now, what's the answer? Yes, sir. It's to they, they wanted to replace the most high God so with these idols. Why? Uh, to try and show him that they can still survive without him. Okay, so you brothers are not paying attention. Okay, brother Hega, let me hear you. Yes, sir. Shalom, sir. Shalom. Yes, sir. I think the reason would be because um, as a people, we don't have faith in the most high. That's why um, we want to create now the graven images because it's something that we can see and that um, we claim to believe on. So it's all because we don't have faith, sir. It's because of lack of faith. So, but my question is, you can't see the Bible? So you, you can, sir. You can, right? Yes, sir. So what is, what is, what is the... What is the, the, the reason why they lack faith? Yes, because they have no faith. That's what we read in Deuteronomy 32 verse 20. That's why there's a need to create a graven image to something that they can see. It's something that is tangible. But they can see the Bible is tangible. What is the problem? Okay, soldiers, soldier Nyamai, let me hear you. Yes, sir. I think uh, it's the spirit of unbelief, sir. Yes, if the spirit of unbelief in what? In the most high God. We, uh, in terms of what? Because maybe I'm, and now I'm just leading you. But what do you, when you say the spirit of unbelief, what is it that they don't believe? What is it that as a nation we don't believe? What is it? We don't believe the word of God, sir. Okay, explain. Elaborate. Make it plain for us. Mm -hmm. Okay, while you're thinking about it, um, Soldier Bezilier, I'm coming back to you again. So now that we explain, or okay, no faith granted, we understand that. What is it that they don't believe? Because he said they don't believe in the Most High. Yeah, but what is it that you say in the in in the in the in the in the, in the, in the what? You, what did you say? I said so they don't believe in the Word of God as it is written. They don't believe in the Word of God. Okay, so uh, soldiers, Soldier Bezilier, what is it about it that they don't believe it? The laws of the Most High God, sir. Yes, but we know is the laws of, they don't believe in the more laws of the Most High God. But what about the laws of the Most High God our people don't believe? Give me an example. Come on, I need you to think. Think, brothers. What is it about the laws of the Most High God they don't believe? What is it? Okay. Um, Soldier Nehemiah, give me First Corinthians, right? Give me First Corinthians 1. Sir. First Corinthians chapter one, verse twenty-one. Read that. First Corinthians chapter one, verse twenty-one. Go ahead. For after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. That's the clue right there. Now, who can answer the question? Okay, so uh, Nehemiah. Yes, sir. I think our people think the word of God is foolish. Mm, he or missed it. Okay, yes. okay. Um, so uh, so uh, Bezalel, let me hear you. Yes, sir. I think uh, our people think they don't believe that the laws of the Most High God can really uh, deliver them. Give me an example. Yes, sir. Like uh, telling our people that just by not shaving off your beard and the sisters uh, getting off their pants, we will get the kingdom. So they think that that's foolish. It's absurd. Yes. So the thing is, they want something tangible. In a sense that 
they don't believe the laws of God in terms of what? What the law says do. If you stop buying on the Sabbath, you are actually on your way for you to receive the kingdom. You understand? You stop celebrating birthdays, you're on your way to ruling the earth. So they don't believe that doing that is what's going to get us the kingdom and rulership of all nations on earth. That's why, go back to Exodus 20, verse 4 again, so we understand this thing. Exodus chapter 20, verse 4. Go ahead. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image mm -hmm. or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Go ahead. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. He says, thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. Now, watch this. Give me the book of 1 Kings. Give me 1 Kings chapter, tw chapter 12. This is during the time of Jeroboam. 1 Kings 12 and verse... Read verse 28. 1 Kings 12, 28. 1 Kings chapter 12, verse 28. Go ahead. Whereupon the king took counsel and made two calves of gold and said unto them, It is too much for you to go up to Jerusalem. Behold thy gods, O Israel, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. You see that? So Jeroboam, he managed to convince them that these two golden calves that he put one in, 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 in Jerusalem, another one he put in Dan, is a listen. These are the these golden calves, they are going to deliver you. So they believed that because they were in the midst of what? Idolatry, adultery, murder, reveling, disorder in marriages, orgies, whoredom. You see that thing? They were in, in the midst of all of that, and it felt good when they were doing it. That's why see, that's why he was able to convince them: behold thy goals, O Israel. You brothers and sisters get that? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All praises to the Lord. Yes, all praises to the Lord. Okay, I'm going to end the class right here. I'm going to end the class right here. All praises to the Most High. Okay, let's break bread. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed to bread, and when he had given thanks, he break it and said, take it. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup, when he had supped, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye, as oft as ye drink it, in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread, and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily, shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. In the name of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Let's give the most a hand for that. All praises to the Lord.